We live in a cozy, comfortable world. A world where we know what the rules are and how this game is played. But while petrol is still my favorite fuel, the world outside is changing. That is the ultraviolet F77. It's a motorcycle. It's a performance motorcycle. It's an electric, electric. performance motorcycle. motorcycle. The spec sheet is impressive. The F77 makes 10 bhp less than a KTM 390 but almost exactly the same peak power as the TVS Apache RR 310. But when it comes to torque, the always on 90 Newton meters is almost three times as much as the KTM and the TVS. The F77 also is 11 kilos lighter than the Apache 310. And from a standing start, the F77 has that seamless, silent urgency that I now expect all electric vehicles to thrill us with. There is no gearbox, but there is a whine from the motor and some clatter from the chain drive, but it really takes off. The thrust starts to taper as the speeds rise, and that's why the F77 can get to 60 km per hour in under 3 seconds, but needs 4 more seconds to hit 100 km per hour. The top speed is just under 150 km per hour, but I promise you, it won't arrive quickly. For all that spec, the F77 felt more like a RTR 200 competitor than a 300cc class challenger that Ultraviolet promised us at the launch. But I believe that this is a fixable problem. There is a lot of software cleverness going on and some of it alters the power output in response to things like the battery charge state or temperature. I believe that these systems were set too aggressively on our test bikes and that's one of the reasons the F77 felt good rather than OMG. But hold on, there's also a new frame to talk about. So there's a lot of KTME detail going on in the F77 and it's no surprise that the frame actually started with the RC200 or RC390. So the front end is almost identical, the rake trail uh, angles are exactly the same and in fact the wheelbase is identical as well. But Ultraviolet has actually done a lot of work here because at the back obviously there's a new swing arm and it's much shorter because the motor unit is quite long and they just could not accommodate anything longer. Above that is a laid down KTM shock. It's the same spec but it's laid down so that it gives you a better anti-squat characteristic and actually it works quite well too. But the biggest change is in here and it's invisible to us. In there is a completely new frame that uses the battery box as a structural member of the frame. It's not the KTM trellis anymore so if you open that there is no orange. But the real question is, how does it handle the corners? Ultraviolet's F77 is a beauty in the corners. The white bars work well with a responsive steering package and the sticky Metzeler M7RRs produce an effortless machine to corner, to sit at big lean angles and to power out of corners. The KTM spec brakes also work beautifully and the Dynamics package felt absolutely terrific. Once the motor starts to deliver what the spec sheet promises, this will be a superb commuter, a terrific twisty road bike and actual fun at the racetrack too. But all that is some time away. Ultraviolet has lots of stuff to finalize first. The actual deliveries are very far away for this rupees 3 to 3.25 lakh motorcycle which is likely to be available in Bangalore only to start with. Despite the rain that interrupted play, a few glitches along the way and extremely limited riding time, the F77 is going to be something to watch out for. But you have almost a full year before you need to start holding your breath. So this F77, it's certainly not a production bike, but what a promising prototype and there are some things about it that I really, really love. For example, the handling. It is such a sweet, predictable handler. I'm sure you're going to have fun riding this. But there are other issues that need to be sorted out, like the powertrain. And remember, on electric bikes, a lot of your riding experience is controlled by software and software can be updated. So the final form of the F77 can only be revealed when the bikes are being delivered to their customers. And even then there might be software updates. So how do we find out what the real picture is? Well, first, you mark your calendar because the bike comes out in October 2020. That's when we'll see what that bike actually does. <laughs>